IoT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric. The places we live, work and entertain ourselves all share a common link and that is we first have to imagine, then design and then build them. And here at Microsoft's Future Decoded event in London, they're working out how we can do that, not just now, but well into the future. And the construction sector is one which is really ripe for revolution, using these new digital approaches and pathways to completely reimagine how we build the world around us. New technology and materials seem to promise a future of safer and more affordable buildings that are greener and more sustainable. But just how rosy is the future of construction? Digital innovation is putting more and more powerful tools into the hands of designers and builders. So in this programme we're looking at how the big companies in the sector are adapting to this new digital age. And what about the companies which were born into this new environment? How are they developing new approaches to help companies thrive in this volatile sector? I'll also be talking to an industry regulations expert to find out how the construction companies are held to account and I'll find out how the sector plans to provide us with the buildings of the future. Microsoft is one of the world's most powerful companies, arguably actually one of our first digital innovators. Its software is used in computers in every single country in the world. Perhaps less well known though is the effect the company is having on developments in the construction industry with devices being tried out by these chaps. It's called the HoloLens. It's an augmented reality device that merges the digital objects of our imagination or even our avatars into a real world environment. The wearers of the HoloLens headsets can communicate with each other no matter where they are and handle computer generated objects. Environmental and safety regulations are a critical part of making first line workers jobs safe and secure. Lorraine Bardeen is Microsoft's General Manager of Windows and HoloLens Experiences. Her keynote speech to the digital savvy crowd here in London went down well, and so it should. She's previously been in charge of Microsoft's strategy on the Internet of Things in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, so there's no doubt she's an expert on tech and its potential impact. Can you give me some examples of how industries are using this technology, let's say the construction industry? With construction, it's, it's one of the best industries to talk about because the process of construction is lighting up uh, scenarios that really are transformed by HoloLens and mixed reality across the whole process. So as you can imagine, designing 3D buildings in 2D behind a 2D screen has limitations. There are experts in doing that, making that cognitive switching, but most people, for most of us, seeing something laid out in 3D makes all the difference. Being able to understand either a kitchen renovation or a massive construction project in 3D and iterate on the design that way, that's been a, a real breakthrough for designers, for architects at the beginning of the construction process. And then, in actually creating the building itself, uh, you're able to take HoloLens to the job site with the plans fully loaded and then lay them out against maybe blank walls or no walls at all and understand how is this construction site going to come together. And that's again where you can collaborate across all the different people who need to be on site and make tough decisions, maybe about the wiring or maybe about moving a door from one place to another. We're really seeing scenarios across construction and it's one of the fastest moving spaces for mixed reality. I, I accept yeah. that. I have to say I'm more skeptical mm. that so early on in yeah. the development of this product, it's only really been out a year or so, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. That you're saying it's transformed the ability of construction businesses to do work they couldn't do before. I mean, genuinely, I don't believe that to be the case. I'm not here to convince people that it's, that it's going to transform the construction industry. What I'm doing is listening to what we're hearing from our customers like, like Trimble, who support construction process. They've already extended their applications and services to HoloLens because it's that important in their business. 
we're hearing the same thing from uh, customers like uh, Oyanagi, which is a Japanese construction firm, which is using HoloLens in the development of complex malls and systems. These are companies, they're moving into the space and they're investing their time and money and energy in what is a relatively complex change management process, this, this whole digital transformation thing, and for them to take on that extra time and effort uh, means that they're seeing a meaningful return. One of the biggest recent digital breakthroughs in construction that HoloLens is tapping into is Building Information Modeling, or BIM for short. You can pick door numbers up, floor numbers up. And you can, I mean, here you've written stuff on it. Can you yeah. write stuff on there as well? You can write stuff on this different section of the iPad, click on the bottom. It's a way of centralizing all the data on a given building project into one accessible point. And 3D visualization is just one element in this complex new centralization of data. For some established companies, rolling out the new changes in practices can be a double edged sword. So, how are the established players adapting to the shifting digital landscape. Balfour Beatty is an international tier one construction company which has ridden many changes since its formation in 1909. I've come to their Birmingham headquarters to find out more about the challenges and opportunities posed to their business. Dean Banks is managing director for Balfour Beatty's UK construction services. Prior to joining the company, he worked for manufacturing giants Dunlop Aviation and Massey Ferguson, amongst others. How important is the growth of digital technology to transforming this industry? Technology and innovation is growing and growing. Three fronts for us really, that you know, Balfour BT needs to operate smarter moving forward to help our productivity. Secondly, we need to put governance and control in place that allows us to make informed decisions via data. And thirdly, to attract new entrants into the market with the skills that we need for the future. One of the defining characteristics of your industry is how it has to collaborate between lots of different suppliers and companies operating in the same space. Do you think technology helps it in that way or makes life harder? Certainly in terms of information sharing, it's going to be better. You know, there has to be an element of trust and transparency and in information that's shared, balanced with, you know, the data protection regulations and making sure that we are sensitive to how we handle that data. But I think if you just look at decision making, you know, we can today share openly our information in terms of the building, somebody can make a decision visually from off-site. Whereas before, everything was done with you know, drawings that took time to update, people often having to come and visit the site. One of the biggest changes we've seen is this move from 2D to 3D visualisation. How significant is that for your industry? Massive change for the industry. So first of all, you've got to remember that perhaps in the past, a person was walking around with a drawing that would get wet on the site. And also when you wanted to make a change, you had to go back to the um, designer in the um, cabin and make sure the change was made and then reissued. Today, you know, first of all, we're operating with, you know, iPads, you know, where there's dynamic change of data. But then when you talk about things like Microsoft HoloLens, there's two things for me that fundamentally stand out. First of all, it's a bit of fun. And, you know, if you can work smarter and it can be a bit of fun, then people tend to adopt it. Secondly, it gives you the ability to see so much more. So that transition from 2D to 3D brings to life the building and gives you the ability to understand the finished article and how you'll operate in that space. And the, the building modelling that we've seen today, do you think that's still very much in its infancy or is it already quite a mature technology? Well, if you look at public procurement, they've insisted at least 50% of projects now are done to BIM level 2. That said, I think as clients start to become more informed about it, they use it for different things. So you can look at you know, the logistics that I've talked about. You can you look at the health and safety benefits. You can look at simply how parts of the building interact with each other. You were at the NIAC earlier, and I've had some of the clients there sitting in one side of the hall, looking at the view through their window from their desk, saying, what will I be able to see? And equally, where they've got areas that they want to be um, closed off for research and development, making sure that other people can't see in. So the concept of modelling, I think, will grow as we move forward. Of course, all of this is based on power, isn't it? I mean, this demand and need for a constant and secure power supply, how much of a key issue is that for you? I think you know, the re reality is that as we start to put more demand on the cloud and technology, then there's a, there's a requirement for greater um, power, which means the stability of the power is fundamental. 
because you have very little backup in terms of having that information available. So as we move forward, the stability of the power that's available is going to become fundamental to the success of the use of innovation. It's no surprise that new technologies are having a big effect on the way we construct new buildings and infrastructure. But those technologies are also providing some huge challenges, not just for the companies, but for the regulators who have to keep businesses on the right side of the rules. So after the break, I'll be finding out how those companies and regulators are keeping ahead of those challenges. The construction industry is incredibly diverse, from private housing to public utilities, from commercial buildings to large infrastructure projects, the industry is very reliant on business-to-business -business cooperation. But it's also having to cope with an amazing amount of new regulations. So how is it navigating its way through that new landscape and working with regulators in this ever more joined up world. I've come to the Institution of Civil Engineers in London, where Paul Wilkinson is Deputy Chair of the Information Systems Panel. He's also a member of the management team at Construction Opportunities for Mobile IT and an authority on the use of construction collaboration technology. It is interesting. We're sitting in one of the grandest buildings I've ever been in, really. <laughs> you know, marble columns, wood panelling surrounding us now. And yet we're talking about an industry, really, which is trying to tackle with a whole different sort of infrastructure. How ready is it, you think, to accept that new technology and those opportunities? I think the levels of preparedness vary. Um, there are certain larger organisations, almost household names in terms of contractors and designers, who are well down that road. The government uh, in the UK, on, when it put its BIM programme forward, set a mandate, um, a target date of uh, April 2016, by which most of its centrally procured projects were going to be delivered using BIM. So for those firms which were heavily involved in public sector projects, that set them a, a target. Most of them have achieved that, but that still leaves a large number of other projects which sit outside centrally procured projects, uh, for whom small companies are, are often engaged and they're still at the very start of their BIM journey. One of the other great themes, I think, of this new digital age is that we've been used to thinking as nations. This is what you do in the UK. Do you have a view, really, on how globally we're meeting this new challenge? The BIM mandate that we saw in the UK in 2016, there was a similar one in Denmark in 2013. So the Nordic countries were pushing forward with their digital adoption and we're seeing digital adoption, digital transformation beginning to take place in other markets, in Australasia, in uh, the Middle East, across Europe, North America and so on. And how consistent are those international regulations? I think we're seeing a more consistency happening simply because we've got multinationals working around the world. They don't want to work and have data about their built assets stored in different formats, subject to different legislation. So we're seeing more and more um, portability of data. One of the organisations involved in industry is a, uh, is a body called Building Smart and they're talking about data dictionaries so that we've got consistent ways in which we define the data, define the technologies and define the terms that we use to, to relate the data uh, and systems to each other. What about health and safety? Construction is still a dangerous job, it's a dangerous industry. I think in the UK there were some 35 deaths in 2014-2015. Do you think this new approach to digital data will help reduce the danger of this industry? The development of British standards now include what we call PAS 1192 Part 6. PAS is a publicly available specification. It's the building block of an international standard covering the use of structured data, covering health and safety. So identifying risks early on and then mitigating or eliminating those risks as far as possible so that the, not only can the building be safely constructed, but also it can be safely maintained and operated and ultimately perhaps safe, also safely dismantled and recycled. For global companies like Balfour Beatty, meeting international regulations is a vital part of their operations. Isn't there an inherent tension in your business that on the one hand you want to have a system that runs across not just this country, runs internationally, 
And yet, all the regulations in the different markets you work in will be completely different and demand different things from you. And those two things just cannot be reconciled. I think we're quite fortunate that Balfour Beat over the last couple of years has consolidated its operations. So fundamentally now we operate in the UK, the US and Hong Kong. And I think from that perspective, if you look at those three countries, the legislation is quite similar. So in many ways what we try and operate in Balfour Beat is we look at what is the optimum operating model across those countries and apply that consistently because having a standard operating procedure is much better for the organisation. So in other words, you meet the highest standard even where it's not needed because that's good for people, it's, it's good for the business systems. I think in its simplest terms the answer to that question is yes. Right. Do you therefore see regulation as a hindrance to technological development? Is it something you've just got to get over or does it perhaps help technological development? From a Balfour Beatty perspective, we're probably not the instigators of technology. It's often brought to us, and by the time that it's brought to us, people have already thought about the impact of regulations. So our challenge really is, how do we take the new innovation and execute it as quickly as possible so we get the return on investment and we get the benefit in the organisation? The construction industry is very highly regulated, it's got lots of safety laws and they're different in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. How does a product like this fit in with that? Microsoft HoloLens is, is a Windows 10 computer, which means that everywhere that Windows is, is certified for use in an environment, HoloLens also is. Let's take the construction sector as an example. It's a dirty environment to work, it's dangerous, there's lots of heavy equipment, a lot of guys with big thumbs which aren't particularly delicate, yeah. and yet Yours is a sort of rather sculpted, light piece of technology. It might not be a great environment. You've hit on another space that has really surprised us and we've, we've tried to react to and, and help with as quickly as we can, which is a lot of these scenarios are coming up for first-line workers who do work in relatively unpredictable environments, maybe dusty, dirty. They need to be using their hands all the time. And they're wearing gloves. They're holding tools. And so we've received feedback and we heard a lot. We want to use HoloLens, but we need to wear protective eyewear and we need to wear hard hats. What we've done in the past few months is we've achieved um, certification for HoloLens to be used as protective eyewear for impact safety in both North American and European markets. So what this means now is that these companies can enable their first-line workers to wear HoloLens, not need to wear separate protective eyewear. And the same goes for IP50 certification for dust environments. And then we're also currently in production on hard hat accessories so that workers can use hard hat along with HoloLens, go about their work. The construction sector already provides regulators with a wide range of challenges and digital transformation is really just part of that. But it's already changing the way we think, design and indeed build some of our major constructions. After the break, we'll be looking at some of the new innovations on the horizon. The construction sector is undergoing a radical digital transformation with disruptive technologies affecting every aspect of the business. The centralization of project data called building information modeling is a recent development and new methods of 3D visualization like Microsoft's HoloLens are helping forge the way ahead. This is early days in the development of this technology, but have you already seen surprising changes in what it's able to do and what people want from it? So one great example is this, this remote assistance uh, functionality. So early on, we, we did this demo internally at Microsoft showing how, look, you can use this to change a, a light switch. You can use this to learn electrical wiring. We paused and thought, that's interesting. Like, but that scenario doesn't come up that often. You know, we've been completely blown away by how pervasive this scenario is of remote expert assistance. Anytime someone is out in the field doing something challenging, they're fixing, they're repairing, they're dealing with a complex piece of machinery, they can call an expert. The expert can look through their eyes using the HoloLens and they can see exactly what they're working on and then they can draw into their real world from any screen anywhere in the world because the HoloLens understands what's in front of it. And then it's, it's an expert's drawing on the screen saying, hey, no, 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 don't change that wire, select that one. It appears in the field service worker's real world, right on the real object they're working with. And so they're able to solve problems in minutes that would have taken hours or even days to resolve. And this is coming up across every industry, construction, manufacturing, repair, field service work, across all industries and across all countries. For international companies like Balfour BT, dealing with the future impact of new technologies requires strategic 
long-term planning. We've set a couple of uh, goals for ourselves as an organisation, so we have an aspiration of 25% reduction in labour on sites in terms of productivity by 2025. And that's through digital technologies? Largely digital technology, so it is doing things smarter. It's starting to think about um, right at the outset of a build how you plan it. So using BIM to drive the build, the logistics, looking at what the client actually wants as a finish point so you understand at the outset so there's less variation. And then also starting to look at the total cost of the actual model of operating the building after we've completed it. Balfour BT are naturally keen to keep pace with changes to chart the uncertain waters ahead. Lorraine Bardeen of Microsoft sees the technology on offer as revolutionary. Technology companies have a vested interest in hyping up the latest products. You do that as every other technology company mm -hmm. does that. What evidence do you think there is that this truly will transform not just the way we work, but the way we interact with people, our lives, mm -hmm. our society? To me, the, the clearest evidence is every single time we figure out a way to make computing more personal, that's going to be a step up in the t transformative potential of technology. This is the first time that a computer looks at the world from your point of view. And that is going to be another huge leap in what computing can do to transform people's real lives. If we got together 10 years time, mm -hmm. we talked about this, do you think we would look back on, on this conversation on, on these years as really some of the most instrumental in the modern digital revolution? Yes. I think that is a, <laughs> an answer which speaks volumes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm not sitting here today saying that Balfour BT can clearly see to the future. We recently, though, put a paper out that talks about how we see innovation in 2050 in our arena. And I think infrastructure is going to fundamentally change. The way you see a project today, you know, is quite labour intensive. People still see, you know, muddy boots and hard hats. In the future, we think that robotics will play a big part. We see drones making decisions. We think information modelling will be in place. 3D printing, and people will be more operating the building site from a control centre elsewhere. That is quite a massive change. But don't you think that technology, whilst it offers lots of opportunities, can actually make people like your job harder? With more information available, you've got to decide which information is fundamental to help you make the right decisions. So it is very much about getting the core information forward. And for different clients, that will mean different things. They'll have very different objectives. For us, one of our core tenants of technology is making sure people are safe. And, you know, we can use technology to a great degree to make sure that the safety on our sites is better. People wearing, you know, a uniform that tells us about their well-being, but also tells us about their fatigue during the day on, on a work site. There's lots of opportunities, I think, for us to use the technology in different ways. Some of these are quite early in the infancy, but I do see them growing and growing as we move forward. For Paul Wilkinson, the future of the construction industry raises concerns not just about building, but also society at large. You know, we need to be investing in the digital skills of the future, the, en the construction engineer, the construction worker of the future. We need to be thinking in a much more joined up way about the end use of the uh, assets. It's not just about delivering a building. It's about how it's going to be operated and maintained for maybe 30, 40, 50, 100 years more or more beyond that. Some of our bigger built infrastructure, they're being designed for 150 year operating periods. And you know, we need to be anticipating what the future needs of transport users, for educationalists, doctors, all of the welfare services that use infrastructure, that we need to be thinking about that, those areas and investing in the skills and investing in the technologies to support the, the use of data, the use of technology. The modern construction industry has sometimes been rather slow at introducing new methods and work practices, but keeping pace with digital technology has become key to the industry thinking. The hope is that new technologies will cut the cost of major construction projects and enable them to be completed faster and more safely. And for the design and construction companies, turning that hope into an economic reality will remain a huge but fascinating challenge for years to come.
IoT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric.